Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida, and today on Boo Ray Explains, we are going to talk about levels. Yeah, levels. So important, such a great tool, and yet a lot of people really don't use levels as much as they should. And I also think that a lot of people don't really understand how levels work. So we are going to talk about levels today. Levels is a tool that you find in any post-processing software for your images, and you should absolutely be using it. So before we get started, a uh, quick reminder, don't forget to follow me because I have got a great group on uh, Facebook called Pro Photo Talk with Blu-ray Perry and you should join me there. It's a good community there, a lot of people and it's a great place to ask questions and just uh, join in in the conversation that's happening. Also, follow me on Instagram at Blu-ray Perry and follow me on Threads. Threads is new and I am that person who likes to post stupid, silly stuff all the time and Threads is where I'm doing it now. So follow me on Threads. Uh, you'll catch it there. You'll also catch it on my Instagram feed and also be sure and look down at my gear page. If you go down to the description, you'll see a link there for my gear page. And if you go to my gear page, you see all the gear that I carry, all the stuff that I carry professionally, all the stuff I carry with my Fuji X100V, all the little things and tricks that I use. And if you click on one of those links and you buy something, it helps to support this channel because I get a couple of dollars. And, and listen, it's not cheap. I should be working right now, but I'm not. <laughs> Instead, I'm making this video. So, all right, let's, let's go into uh, Capture One and let's look at some images and talk about levels. I went out and took a couple of pictures this morning with my Fuji X100V looking for some images that would give me good examples that I could use to talk about the Levels tool. So this is the Levels tool right over here on the left. See the Levels tool? And this is how important it is. You see my stack here of all the things that I like to use when I'm retouching an image? Uh, the higher you are in the stack, the more important you are. And you can see that Levels comes in right under white balance. So I adjust my white balance here, and then I immediately adjust my levels before I get to my layers, which is where I start doing all the you know crazy stuff with uh, dynamic range and exposure and style brushes and clarity, all that stuff I do on layers. But before I get there, I like to adjust my layers on my uh, levels, and you should be doing that too. So let's talk about the tool. I'm going to pull it out here and make it bigger so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, let's see if I can grab the edge. There we go. So this is the Levels tool. It looks a lot like a histogram because it is a histogram, and I have a video about histogram. If you don't know what that is, uh, go find the video. I'll put a link up here for you. And what this is showing you is it has four different tabs here, and most of them work this way. This is red, green, blue. This shows you all the colors in your image. And then you can also separate it out by colors. This shows you the reds, this shows you the green, and this shows you the blue. And now, there's a lot of detail that could go into this video talking about levels, and as I tend to do with most of my videos like this, I like to kind of just give you a good overview so that you can work with this tool or understand this concept, because with photography, you can go so, so deep into every single thing that it can just be maddening. So what's important is that you understand the general idea behind it. So this is your levels histogram, and it's showing me through this graph all my red, green, and blue in the image and it's showing me where it falls on the tonality scale and tone basically means uh, is it black is it white or is it somewhere in between so here's my tonality scale and it goes from zero at one end to 50 to 255 at the other end so if something is at 255 it is pure white and if something is at zero it is pure black so in this image these are the numbers of pixels that fall in the range. So this mountain represents pixels, more and more and more pixels, right? More and more and more. Th so you can see it right here, this range right here, this mountain peak right here is the tallest, which means right here is where you have the most pixels in this image, in this tone. So this is pretty close to being in the middle. See, this is the middle right here, and this is pretty close to being the middle. So in this image, as you can see, if you look at this big mountain that's sitting right in the middle, you can see that most of the images, most of the pixels in this image are in the mid-range. There are not a lot of white pixels. There are no pure black pixels. Almost all the pixels are right in the middle, in the gray zone. And if you look at the image, 
you can see that that's the case, right? Look at this. Now watch watch what happens when I move my cursor when I'm over the image. You see this orange uh, stripe right here? This orange stripe will show me exactly where that spot is on the tone curve. So you notice as I move around, so when I go to like a, a dark area here, see, that's where it is. That's where it is on, on you know, that's, that's how dark it is. It's not completely black, as you can see. In order to be completely black, it would be all the way down here. But it's pretty dark. Right, so that's pretty dark, and then like this is pretty, pretty much lighter, much lighter, and then in the middle is most of my stuff. And you can just move around and see that right about there, that's the middle. So you see where my cursor is? You see where my little eyedrop tool is? That's middle gray. That's dead center of my tonality range. So now we understand what this means, right, and what it's showing us. How can we use it to change our images? Well, here's the thing. What Levels is really for, mostly, is setting a white point and a black point in the image. Most images, if you want them to have good contrast, if you want them to have good pop to the eye, you need something in that image that is pure black and something in that image that is pure white. Now, you don't want too much. You don't want the majority of the image to be pure black or the majority to be pure white. I mean, you might. It's an artistic choice. Uh, but um, you usually just want at least something that's pure white and pure black because the human eye then will see the full range. From pure black to pure white, everything will be stuck in between that range. So you'll be getting the full range of tonality, and that's pleasing to the human eye. Now, in this particular picture, we're not getting the full range of tonality. What we are getting is a little bit of white and a bunch of mid-tones and then a little bit of dark, but we're not getting any black at all. So, if you want to show more range, what you need to do is make the whole range shorter. So, you're going to take our, our tones right here. These are the darkest tones we have in the image. They're not pure black, but they, they're the darkest thing we have. And we're going to make them the stopping point. So, they are going to become pure black. So, we just grab this and we push it right over here to there. So, now what have we done? So before, we started at zero, and there were no pixels at zero, and there were no pixels at one, or two, or three, or four, or five, or six, or seven, or eight. The first pixel that came in dark was at 17. That's the darkest pixel that we have. Well, now we're saying that pixel is going to be the new zero. We want that pixel to be completely black. And if you look at the image when I do it, watch, I'll do it again, you can see how we're getting darker tones now into the image. We've now set the black point right here and said that what was 17 on the scale of 0 to 255 is now going to be 0. This is where we're going to start our scale. And if we go to the other end, we can do the same thing with the white. Now, there actually probably is a pure white pixel, but what we want to do is make more of them pure white. So we're going to say instead of making pixel number 255, instead of making that one pure white, we're going to go all the way in to, say, here. So now, everything that is to the right of this line is going to be 255. This is our new end point. Our scale now goes from 17 to 236. So all the pixels that are between 17 and 236 are represented. And anything that is over 236 is just pure white, 255. And anything that is under 17 is pure black. So, I'm going to reset the image now. Look at the image closely. Now, watch when I reset it to what it was before. See the difference? You see how this is kind of hazy? Because it's all mid-tones, no pure blacks, very little pure white. But if I just move the white point and bring in some whites, and I move the black point to make the blacks blacker, the black point blacker, now it becomes more contrasty. You see how that works? Now, when you do that, it also moves the midpoint. See how the midpoint is moving? Because what you're doing is you're saying, I want this to be the black point and this to be the white point, and it's going to move these a little bit left or right as you do that to try and keep the same range in the same sort of area that it was before. But that's the look of levels. All right, let's look at another image real quick. So here we go. Here we've got a little bit of an opposite situation from what was happening before. 
In this situation, we have a lot of stuff at the black end and not so much stuff at the white end, although quite a bit here. So there's actually pretty good tonal range in this image, although if you look here, you see a lot of stuff that's right at the wall, that's right at the pure black range, and you typically don't want a lot of stuff that's at the pure black range. Uh, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles on this one. There's a lot of stuff at the pure black range. So if you wanted this to look brighter, if you look at this image and you're like, oh, I want this to be a brighter image. I want it to look like a more sunny day than it was. You grab the white point and you just move it in a little like this. And now you're saying all these pixels, which were not quite pure white, pure white, they are now going to be pure white. So let me reset it so you can see it. See the difference? It can be subtle. But just that right there can make a difference. Now the image is just a little bit brighter because there are more pixels in this image that are pure white than there were before. Another way that you can do it is you can use the eyedropper tool to actually pick what you want to be pure white. So look, at, look over here. This right here is probably where the pure white is. There's not much pure white in this image, but if you look around, you can try and find it. And right up in here, this might be pure white. And if you look at the orange thing, it's not quite there. Uh, uh, it's maybe over here in these little spots. It's hard to find. It may be hidden. It may be some one little highlight somewhere in the image that's pure white. That one maybe? No, that's close. So what you can do is you can pick a highlight, like let's say this back spot over here, and just say, I want this right here to be pure white. And I'll click it. Boom. And now it's going to move your line for you. It's going to move your white point. And now this, this pixel is pure white. And every pixel like it is pure, pure white. And any pixel that's whiter than this is pure white. See the difference it made in my image? See how bright my image is now? This is a bright, sunny image. Whereas before, a little dull. <laughs> now you probably didn't think it was a little dull when you first looked at it. But once you set a white point, so there's more pure white in the image, it changes the image drastically. And the same thing happens if you mess with the blacks. So let's go down to the blacks and just move them up and you can see. So more blacks, more whites, and now the image overall is more contrasty because more images, more pixels are pure black and more pixels are pure white. All right, so now, now we understand levels and what levels can do for us. The question is, why do we use levels and not exposure? Because a lot of people, and I'm guilty of this too, um, we want to jump straight to exposure, right? So let me uh, move this up here a little bit. So here's my exposure slattles. So, uh, so I'm going to do this, reset this. So <clears throat> a lot of times you want to jump straight to exposure. So let me pick, let's see, is that a good one? Yeah, this is a good one. Let's stay with this one. Here's the difference. When I reset this, watch what happens. I'm going to change the white point, and I'm going to change the black point. Now, the midpoint moved, because as you're moving the ends of the scale, the whole scale is going to move a little left and a little right. But what you'll notice is the peaks and the valleys did not change. They stayed the same. Now, watch what happens if I go to exposure and I just raise the exposure. Now, if I'm raising the exposure, I'm making every pixel on the screen more white. Watch what happens. Look at our mountains. See how they're moving? See how it's changing? Why is that? What's going on there? Well, here's the thing. You know, I just said that when I change the exposure, I make every pixel more white. That's not true. That's not the way the exposure slider works. The exposure slider uses an algorithm. When you say, raise my exposure, it pushes everything towards the white point. Sure. But the more you do it, the more the algorithm starts to go in and mess with your peaks and your valleys. It's not moving the whole mountain range over to white. What it's doing is it's raising and making more pixels more white, but it's also changing those pixels as you go. It won't make every single pixel the same amount of white or every single picture pixel the same amount of black. So look, if we go black watch. It's going to see how it's compressing them up now. Doesn't change them quite as much, but when you do, when you go to, when you raise the exposure, man, it definitely changes which pixels 
are white, which are black, and how much white gets applied to each pixel. That does not happen with levels. When you change the levels, your mountain stays the same. It's, you're with levels, you just say, I want this to be the black point and this to be the white point, and then everything else is distributed in between those two points exactly the way it was distributed in the original image. That's the key point. It does not mess the way that the pixels are distributed in the tonal range. It just cuts off the ends. <laughs> it cuts off the ends of that cake. <laughs> so in, in many ways, it, it's stretching it, but it's not really stretching it. It's not changing the shape. It's kind of a hard concept to grasp, but really you can definitely see it when you look at it. That when you change the exposure, it doesn't. It, it changes the relationship of the pixels to each other. And that's the difference between exposure and and levels. So when you use exposure, you say, oh, this image, I, I wish it was a little bit more bright. I'll just do this. Okay. And I wish it was a little, more, a little more dark. I'll, well, you can't use the exposure to also make it more dark. You can't make it more light and more dark. So I can make it more light. And then I'll use contrast. And contrast is going to start to flatten it and kind of move this towards the dark. And that'll give me, you know, but you, you're really messing with all this stuff. The algorithm is doing all kinds of stuff here. But if you just go into levels, you can say, I want more white in my image and I want more dark in my image. And there you go. And the middle stays the same. So that's levels. How do you feel about levels? Talk to me down, <laughs> down in the comments. Does it make sense to you? Do you see that adjusting levels is a more pure way of changing the blacks and the whites in your photo than adjusting exposure is? And yet, and I'm guilty of this. I, you know, your first instinct when you look at an image and you go, oh, it's not bright enough. Your first instinct is to go in there and hit that exposure, right? Let's just raise the exposure in raw. And when you do that, not only is it raising the level of the light in every single pixel, but it's also changing the balance of those pixels and how they relate to each other. And it does a great job. Many times that is what you want to do. But I have found that usually... The thing that you want to do first before you go mess with your levels is go, I mean, before you go, I'm sorry, before you go mess with your exposure is to mess with your levels. Go to your levels and look. And if you've got you know, missing whites or missing blacks, fix those ends so that your range is now pure black to pure white. And then if you still think the exposure is wrong, use the exposure slider. All right. Hopefully this helps you a little bit with understanding the difference between levels and exposure. And hopefully if you're not using levels too much, you'll start using and experimenting with them well uh, more. I, I think that it's a more pure way of changing your image. Uh, and I think that it's a, a more natural in many respects because you're not saying change everything in the image. You're just saying, listen, you know, we need this. There needs to be a black point. There needs to be a white point. And bam, give me that. And nine times out of 10, that fixes most of your problems in the image and it gives you a good contrasty image. And it's okay if you don't want to contrast the image. You don't have to do that at all. Sometimes, you know, the flat image is great. But if you want that contrast, I think the best way to do it is with levels. All right. If you haven't been watching this series, you should because I don't know how many of these videos I've made at this point, but I've been, I started at the beginning and I'm working my way through all of the concepts in photography that I can think of and explaining each one of them one by one. So I'll put a link up here for you that shows you where the playlist is and you can watch all of these and check out my other videos as well. And I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching.